Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's a podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. And um, originally, I wasn't planning on talking about this episode. I had another topic in mind for this uh, installment. But I figured I've been on kind of a good streak in regards to talking about relevant, you know, you know, things happening right now in media and like movies, television, whatever. So I figured I'd kind of continue that trend and uh, talk about the recent announcement of the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting game collection that um, we got. So for those of you who might not know or for every reason have been living under a rock these past few days, uh, I think it was in the latest Nintendo Direct, we got um, an announcement that uh, on, it's like Steam, on the Switch, on um, playstation 5 and uh not on xbox though i i think they said i think it's very specifically said it wasn't coming on xbox but that we were getting a collection of the marvel versus capcom games so it's like um yeah i think like x-men children of the atom we're getting marvel superheroes the first marvel versus capcom and most notably marvel versus capcom 2 which has been like released for a long long time uh, if you want like more of a history or like explaining the nature of this, um, of how big of a deal this is, Maximilian Dude released um, a video talking about it that, you, th- that that mine will kind of serve as more of an addendum to because I don't think I'll go into the history in the same way that he will. But yeah, it's been kind of a big deal. Like everyone on social media has, at least for, on my on my feeds have been like doing fan art of it, have been talking about it, um, about how hyped they are and everything like that. Uh, for myself, uh, I mean, I am pretty hyped. It is like very cool to see like everyone in the FGC getting really pumped for this game. Although, uh, I've never had that much of a history with it. Uh, it's always been either. I was too young to kind of like understand it. Like, you know, as, as like a, as the mechanics of it as a fighting game or i've been too busy to really like learn it i think my earliest memories was like my brother and my cousin would you know fight against each other because my cousin was like very rich and he was like one of the few friends that we had that uh um had a dreamcast and that was the version that they played um but again, I was like a really young kid, so I didn't like really play video. I, I was like the young sibling that would watch others play video games, so I never really got a chance to like pick it up myself. Um, so for me, the legacy of Marvel vs. Capcom kind of stems more from like the art of it. I think the art is um, really amazing. I, I can never remember which like classic Capcom artist it is that did the work on that. Um, but you know it's that's always been like the thing that's really stuck out for me in that game as well as you know introducing me to a lot of really cool marvel characters that i didn't really know about um as well as one of my favorite fighting game characters uh Aming- i think you say his name like amingo he's the cactus guy from marvel vs. capcom 2 you know he's i think he's cool i i i like him i don't know like just this anthropomorphic cactus that like grows his body to attack you. I, I just thought that was like a really cool concept. Um, but, uh, you know, he hasn't really been in anything else because he's been basically locked in Marvel vs. Capcom 2, which hasn't really seen a release since I, I think it was like a re release on Xbox 6, 360, PlayStation 3 era, which was, you know, obviously like years ago. Um, but no, I think it's very, it's very, very, very cool. Um, but I, I think I kind of want to focus on kind of understanding why we're seeing this now. Um, it, it's something that I don't think people are really talking about, like why both Marvel and Capcom are finally agreeing to like put this out now, even though fans have been asking for it for years, as well as speculate on the potential future for i mean a lot of people are like you know kind of wondering oh will this lead to an mvc4 or you know just a general continuation of the series and so just kind of giving my own thoughts on that um so why why are we seeing that well in order to like answer why i think we're finally seeing um this series come back you have to look at both the marvel and capcom side of it 
So from Marvel's end, at least my theory is, I think the reason why they're finally okaying it has to kind of correlate to their current strategy with like the you know like in general i guess the marvel cinematic universe but you know marvel as a whole in that um where they're kind of leaning hard towards x-men right like we're in this like interesting x-men uh i was gonna say reconnaissance but renaissance renaissance where you know we're getting like a critical reevaluation of like the movies from like the 2000s uh you're getting like these cameo appearances in like the Marvel shows, as well as um, you know a bunch of like other Marvel properties. Uh, you had the success of like the most recent like animated, um, like Mar like the X Men ninety seven of X Men ninety seven, and uh, no, so in general, like people are like really hyped on. You know, X-Men. Oh, and we're getting, like, the new Deadpool movie, uh, Deadpool and Wolverine, coming out soon. So I think... So what I theorize is that, you know, wanting to kind of capitalize and, like, continue to build that hype, they're thinking, oh, well, we have this game series where, um, you know, that not only, you know, like, prominently featured X-Men, but got many people into, like, the X-Men franchise in general so i think they see this as an opportunity to kind of like really promote their brand and this new strategy of like focusing on like x-men and like basically kind of like in in their attempt to like pivot away like towards that for like guiding their movies and whatnot um and yeah i mean it obviously does make sense uh like i said a lot of people got into x-men because of these games or at the very least, their popularity really rose because of, like, you know, the um, X-Men Children of the Atom and X-Men vs. Street Fighter and, and, you know, more so. So I think that's why, on, like, Marvel's side, they agree to it. But um, for Capcom, it's kind of more interesting. I, I think for Capcom, like, in recent years, they've been experimenting with just in general doing, um, like crossovers overall i think they kind of started with doing um crossovers within their own properties which makes sense because um you know that's the easiest thing for them to do so you'd see in like monster hunter um you had like these crossover quests where you could get like cool items and things like that uh notably um although branching out from that then they started to think okay maybe we should start going with um collaborating with other third-party developers and whatnot. So you had, like, the big collaboration with uh, Fortnite, which was, I, I imagine, hugely successful for both parties. Um, you also still kind of had, like, the tech... I mean, I'll get more into this um, later, but you had, like, the Akuma being in Tekken. And um, so I, I, think, I think with that general trend, they're like, oh, these crossovers are really, like, working for us. And so they're, I think, trying to dip more of their feet into that water. We recently got the announcement of Harry and Mai being in Street Fighter VI, which is really, really dope. So, yeah, I think this is just kind of a part of, like, this trend of, like, oh, we want to start, you know, building these collaborations again with, like, um, third-party like you know outs outside of our company with other like you know third-party developers or what have you so i i think um that is, i think from at least the business standpoint that's what got us to here i'm not i don't want to downplay the significance of the free mvc2 movement that was you know um spearheaded by you know figures like max and what have you but i think at, at least from a business end I think that's why, you know, both Capcom, like, we finally got Marvel and Capcom to agree to this. Because as a lot of people were saying, there's speculation on, um, how would you say, it, that if this was even possible, like, you know, Max in his reaction was like, did, never thought that we would get this, you know, that we would get this put out there, right? He, you know, he was he was all but believing in that, you know, this the series was just gonna be forever dead, essentially, right? Um But with that we kind of get into the speculation on okay, what will this will this continue to lead into further collaborations with Marvel 
and Capcom to the point where will it like result in a new game in you know the fabled MVC four, right? And I I hate to be that guy, but I I'm not as optimistic about it. If I'm to be honest, like I know um you know i'm I'm cautiously optimistic for it, and I think the the reason why I am is that uh i I just don't think it's in the nature of the current gaming landscape you know i I just think like it, it's one thing to have like to bring on d l c characters to like guest star in um you know um you know your your property or what have you and again like um Capcom was probably very much like the reason why we're getting my and Terry is because Capcom is being inspired by like Bandai Namco with the success that they've had in the Tekken crossovers with not only Akuma, but with also Geese and Negan and, you know, what have you that, uh, and Noctis that, um, you know, they're like, oh, we can replicate that strategy with our own mainline fighting game, you know, with Street Fighter six. And, um, but it, it's one thing to do DLC for a game, but it's another to like build a whole crossover game from the ground up. So if you kind of see where I'm leading with this logic, I don't know if Capcom is willing to commit to a full-on crossover, or if it would, um, w or if it if it would just make more sense for them to just stick with the current strategy, which all all games seem to be, seem to be doing, which is just restricting it just to dlc you know if you just make a crossover dlc character you know you're not like and it for whatever reason tanks or doesn't like pan out you know you're not like risking the sales of like an entire game especially since you know capcom i imagine i granted you have seen like changes in like leaderships and like studio heads and what have you um that you know, um, they probably have different perspective on this, but in the past, like, you have to imagine some of them are still feeling the burn from, you know, the failures of MVCI as well as uh, Street Fighter versus Tekken. So I imagine there, uh, there still has to be some level of hesitancy in, like, fully committing to a collab. And it's kind of unfortunate because I, I also don't think we're going to be seeing a continue. you know, I don't think we're going to be seeing... Um, like a full on like another entry in the Capcom versus SNK series, which uh, that one I do have more of a history with uh, playing like Capcom versus SNK two, Mark the Millennium on GameCube. That was like actually my, the first fighting game I ever played. So, but I I just don't again I just don't think we're in the current gaming landscape to see these like you know full scale collaborative projects in the way that we have you know in the past um but okay so what will this mean then for uh any future collaboration with uh you know capcom and marvel well there's different ways i i could see like more more practically how they could go about it uh i i hope it's not like the you know tmnt crossover that got street fighter 6 where it was just like they changed the battle hub and they gave you and they gave us like costumes for the avatar i I I really don't want it to be that, but you know, I mean, if past trends dictate that, um, it might be. Like it, it's not with it's not like outside the realm of possibility that they'll just go that route. Um, but I think kind of like a good in between, you know, doing a um a full on crossover game versus like you know just doing like a simple collab, like changing the battle hub or whatever, is that would we see a Marvel character in like Street Fighter 6? I mean, I don't know. Like, I, nobody thought that we would get Meyer Terry in the game, but here we are. And I think that DLC pack is going to be insanely successful and popular. So I, I don't think it's outside the realm of... um possibility that maybe they'll throw in uh who would they throw in like i don't know maybe like cyclops or something or I, I i don't know i don't know we're in like i guess to be fair we are kind of in this like weird territory with like you know crossovers and like 
and and just all of this right um so i i wonder if that would be more likely if we would just see like you know a singular character again as opposed to like a whole large collaborative project but um who knows i mean time has made me a fool in the past you know you're talking about the guy that had higher hopes for quibby right and that you know frequently gets a lot of oscar picks wrong so you know who knows this could just be another case in which i mean i hope i am like, it would be really cool to see like another like marvel versus capcom game especially you know with like a lot of the current design philosophies that we see from the capcom's fighting game like developers and like fighting game leads uh and especially like god imagine a lot of um marvel characters realized in the um re engine or possibly i mean depending on how far out like the development of this game would hypothetically be it'd be like uh you know in the re2 engine that they've announced they're like kind of working around and you know messing around with um but i mean i don't know it's i mean yeah we're living in very unpredictable times it also kind of throws a wrench in some predictions this kind of throws a wrench in some predictions that i had for um the for the potential like Tekken crossover, Tekken A crossover character that we'd be getting because I I, ha I had like kind of a crazier idea like okay they're gonna go for like they might go for some far out you know crossover character like they did with Negan, and since you know Marvel doesn't really have the same like again granted this this thought I had was before this announcement of Marvel versus Capcom fighting game collection. I thought, oh, maybe Marvel or like Bandai Namco will reach out to Marvel or vice versa, and they'll be like, "Hey, can we? Since you're not really working with Capcom anymore, do you want to throw one of your characters in Tekken Eight? You know?" And I, I thought, I thought maybe they were gonna go for like Daredevil if that's the case, because you know Marvel, uh, in addition to obviously pivoting towards like, you know, X Men uh, with the acquisition of Fox, they also got. Um, Wait, well, no, yeah, yeah, I think I think Daredevil was Fox at the at the time. And well, basically Marvel has a new Daredevil show on the horizon. They've been, you know, pushing him in like the the Spider-Man movie, Kingpin was part of the Echo series. Um, so I thought, oh, maybe they'll bring Daredevil in Tekken because that's that's, you know, I think he's like grounded enough to where he would make sense, you know, he doesn't have any like ridiculous powers that would you know, um, I mean, not to say that they couldn't because they did with Akuma, but I, I, I don't know. I think to me, like Daredevil would make the most sense in Tekken, especially like you could design really cool attacks with, you know, his, um, like his, this cane weapon or what have you. Um, but now I don't know. I don't know. Like, I don't know if, uh, Marvel would go for, you know, a collaboration with both Capcom and, um, like bad dynamco Tekken in, in that regard. Um but uh yeah, I think that's um so I don't know. I mean I, I guess we'll have to uh we'll just have to ultimately uh see uh hopefully I get a chance to pick up and try the you know, the Marvel vs. Capcom fighting game collection, especially I like a lot of the quality of life stuff that they've been introducing in these fighting game collection stuff. Oh, some people were also speculating because um, they're saying that they're, with the release of Marvel vs. Ca this Marvel vs. Capcom collection, that uh, Capcom has changed the branding, branding to like the fighting game collection series, so it implies that we'll get more entries in the future. And, you know, the big one, the next big one that a lot of people want is uh, Capcom versus SNK fighting game collection. So you get like the first one, you get like two, Mark and Millennium, um, you know, what have you, maybe SNK versus Capcom, like the Chaos series. Uh, and that would also be pretty dope. I, I think, honestly, I, I might be a little bit more hyped for that, only because, again, I have more of the personal history with that. Um,. But, I mean, who knows? We'll, we'll have to see. Um, you know, we also have speculation that since uh, Street Fighter is getting the crossover with, like, Terry and Mai, that Garo City of the Wolves, or even, like, the latest KOF game, we'll see a crossover with Capcom characters. Um, 
but you, this this is why I you see what I mean when I say like I think they'll just stick with like the strategy of just DLC characters being, you know, um, you know, as part of this as a part of this collaborative project as opposed to like a full on game. But hopefully I'm wrong. Hopefully I'm wrong. Um, but that is going to do it for me. If for whatever reason, if for whatever eh, sorry, if for whatever reason you disagree with my opinion. You can 1v1 me in Street Fighter 6. You know, if you're watching this as a video, my username is right there. I was playing Akuma in this footage. Uh, yeah, come at me. What are you going to do?